Hi folks, this is Tony at Travel Scoot again, and today we are going to show you how to replace the circuit board and on-off switch assembly on the old belt-driven model Travel Scoots. This is our original uh, version of the Travel Scoot with the throttle assembly as you see right here with the lateral on-off switch. And um, as these throttle assemblies become less available, we are uh, going to try to continue to support this by offering the component that actually may wear out or fail on this, uh, namely the circuit board and on off switch as a complete assembly. Uh, this swap should take about uh, five to 10 minutes. It's yeah, a little persnickety as far as small hardware goes. It's, uh, there's a number of very small screws in here you need to hold on to. And the tools that you'll need for this procedure are a number one or zero size Phillips screwdriver, um, easily purchased for maybe a couple bucks at most at any hardware store. And you'll need your three millimeter Allen wrench from your toolkit, which you should have. As a reminder, please continue to perform your six month maintenance checkup on your scooters all the time. We're seeing some pretty badly neglected scooters there over the years. And you may also need, just as a backup, if you find that you need to loosen the brake assembly on the old belt drive scooter, the five millimeter Allen wrench from your tool set. Not always necessary. Every once in a while, if somebody's got one adjusted in an awkward uh, position, you may need to loosen it to rotate it out of the way. And just in case, one of my favorite tools, a pair of cheaters. The dollar store is my optician. Anyway, here we go. What you'll want to do, number one, and I'll show you where to loosen the throttle assembly so you can rotate it. If you're sitting on the travel scoot and you look at the throttle, you'll see an Allen head bolt sticking out, or rather facing you. Go ahead and loosen that by a few turns. This allows the entire throttle assembly to twist. Not just the uh, throttle itself, but the complete cuff with the on-off switch and uh, circuit board body. This gives you access to these three screws. Here is one screw right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. And yes, they are very small. Thankfully, this screwdriver is slightly magnetized. We'll chase that one down later. Uh, try not to be doing this on shag carpet. Just a heads up. I'm gonna rotate the handlebars around. By loosening this, it also exposes these screws on the lower end. Let's start with this one and I'll show you a little characteristic of that last screw that we'll take out. Set her down. And this screw right here is right next to our Hall Effect transducer magnet. So you'll actually find that this thing is magnetically held in place, or rather won't fall down because of the magnet inside this thing. Okay, now we're gonna rotate it back. We're gonna lift the PCB cover. By the way, this part is also available as a spare part. Oh, there goes our screw. Set this aside. What you wanna observe is that this tab right here that helps locate the PCB cover inside the body is not broken off. We'll set this aside. All right, this exposes the on-off switch and the circuit board. Simple enough. Okay, again, you've got three screws. They are the same size as the screws that hold the uh, cover in place. So if they get mixed up, it's no real big deal. And I sure hope Kevin hits the fast forward button. This screw head seems to be a bit damaged, so I'm going to pause the filming for a second and grab a set of pliers and extract that. Okay, so instead of going for the pliers, I went ahead and grabbed a larger Phillips. This is a number one, the Phillips screwdriver that we were using previously that had a little bit of difficulty with that slightly stripped head was a zero or an aught. You can see a slight difference. Um, whatever it takes to remove that. If you do purchase the PCB from us, 
uh, please make a mention of a few additional screws. We'll be happy to include them. Okay, now we've liberated the circuit board and on off switch. We'll lift it out of the housing and you'll see where it's connected to the cable going down to the motor. This is a simple Molex style pin connector. You'll see here that there are ridges where it connects to the circuit board. You cannot install it in reverse. You'll also notice that it is twisted over so that it fits into this molded cuff on the housing. So we'll remove this, pull it out. We'll grab our new circuit board. Again, with the ridges facing the open part, we'll plug it in. And now I'd like you to observe one little detail here. Let's we flip this back over. This little transistor here needs to be in a set proximity to this silver magnetic ramp. That is how the throttle transmits the twist grip position to the motor. That's what makes the thing run at a set speed. Be careful not to damage this. It doesn't happen that often, but if somebody comes along and goes, oh, I wonder what this is, and bends it back and forth, that will affect things. And in just a moment, I'll show you what else to observe when you install the circuit board. Okay, let's place it. Let's place the cables in here. Set this near loosely, and we're going to set our on-off switch inside this shell here. It does need to sit flush. There is a receptacle. It is possible to install it incorrectly. You'll notice it. Once you install it in the upper shelf, it'll be held, it'll be securely held, and you can actually flip it on and off. Uh, the position of the on and off is not that critical. If it were to be turned around, you'd still have the same operation. No big deal. Okay, now we carefully set our circuit board in place. Of course, your throttle is going to be loose, so it may need a little steadying hand. Let's start by installing our screws. And this is where the glasses may come in handy. So if I reach for my cheaters, well, you'll see it here. And lo and behold, that's our stripped screw, so we'll just set that in place for the moment. Set the other one in here. And drop it on the floor. Pick it back up. And try again. Sometimes I make this look easier than uh, other folks. Uh, may have a time with it on their first attempt. Don't get too frustrated. But this is actually an important detail I'm about to show you. These two screws over here have a post underneath. So you cannot, I'll say, you can over tighten these screws, of course, but you will hit a positive stop when you reach the, uh, when the uh, circuit board hits the posts for support. On this side, there is no such post, or rather that the post is set lower. That is to allow a certain amount of adjustment up and down. That adjustment is not critical unless you over tighten it and force that little transistor we just talked about into that magnetic ramp, which is where you'll bend it. So let me get this started. Nope, completely missed the receptacle. There we go. Missed it again. Come on, Bubby. Okay, we've just started it. Okay, now with this one, I've hit solid resistance, which means we're down. I'm going to go ahead and grab the number one Phillips here because it grasps the screw a little better. Okay, again, got resistance. And you can see that this board 
circuit board is lying flat now. I'm just going to exaggerate this for a second and continue to screw this down. If you notice this thing, if the circuit board bending or getting close to touching the switch assembly, you know you're over tightening it. Just back it off a little bit. That is adequate. I'll go ahead and run the screw down just a little bit. And we are good to go. You can actually plug in your battery and test the on off function of the scooter or rather of the circuit board in its ins uh, installation right now before you put the cover on and before you tighten the grip. But let's go ahead and install the cover. Again, here is the slot into which this tab fits. And of course, this then grabs the cable. Reassembly in reverse order of taking the thing apart. I'm not going to repeat the uh, other two screws right now. For the time being, let's just rotate that back into place. Set your space to your grip if you need to. Grab your four millimeter or three millimeter Allen wrench. Insert into the Allen screw and adjust to your desired angle. And you're good to go. Thanks for watching and happy scooting.